Hey guys, welcome back to Jody Hughes Music, and today's lesson we're going to keep going with these G major scales. By the time you're done with all these videos, you're really going to know uh, your G major. And kind of what the point of these are, is, by the way, is that we want to get you out of playing in boxes and just little group positions, if you will. And we really want to see the entire fingerboard, the entire kind of the long the length of it. And the way I would say is, you don't want to just kind of be zoomed in to one position, you want to be zoomed out into the entire thing, you can see it all at once. And then you can move around into zooming in and zooming out of the fingerboard, if you will. So, today's video is a technique of playing on one string, actually. Basically playing the string up and down the fingerboard as opposed to across. And I certainly didn't make up this idea. I know that one of my musical heroes, a guy by the name of Jim Hall, famous jazz guitar player, he practiced like this. In fact, I think he said he used to tie rubber bands around some of the strings or something so he wouldn't play those things. And he just kind of forced himself to improvise on one or two strings. So for me, this has been something that has seriously improved my playing. You just have to kind of keep at it and go with these videos and we'll get to how you use all this information, if you will. But let's get started. So once again, it's just a G major scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. And I'm going to get you started on the third string, but the idea and the hope is that you'll actually go through and do this on all of the strings. So if we're on a G, the next note is going to, that's the third string open, next note is going to be the second fret of the third string, that's an A, and then we're going to move up to the B on the, on the fourth fret. And so all I'm doing is I'm going to be going like this, you're going to see I'm going to stay on one string. So G, A, and then B is the fourth fret. C is only a half step away, so it's the 5th fret. D is a whole step away, so 7th fret. And then E is a whole step away, which is the ninth fret. And then we're going to jump to the 11th fret, and then that's their, our F sharp. And then finally the 12th fret. So I'm going to give these to you in numbers on that one string. So it's open, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11 and then 12. I'll do that faster. And you can hear that. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put rolls to this because part of our idea here, you can use this information in any way you want. You can use it to like improvise with single string. And you can make up stuff like that. Or you can use rolls. And I'm pretty sure one guy that maybe you've heard of that uses this technique is a guy by the name of Ron Block, who's playing I really love. Um, and he uses this kind of looking along the string, okay? And he got it from um, a book called Advancing Guitars. But anyways, we're going to go three, five, three, one, five, three, one. It's going to be a forward roll. And I'm going to show you how you use this in more of a scruggsy kind of bluegrassy sound, if you will. And then we're going to go through each of the notes while doing that roll. So here goes. I'm on the D next. E. F sharp. G. So the idea is I just keep doing the same roll over and over. And here's what it's going to sound like. destination to G again and like all scales don't just practice it going up you got to practice it going down too now you're probably asking well you know you don't see guys play like this they don't play on one string right and you're certainly correct but what I want to show you is how maybe you can eventually take this and improvise with. So I'll create some patterns, all right? And it's going to be a little bit more advanced than just a forward roll here, but I just want to demonstrate where you can go with this. So I'm staying on one string, but now maybe I add some slides in or something. really 
really advanced there, I guess. But basically, I'm just hammering. And I'm playing around with the rolls. And it's hard to put this into words, but eventually you get to the point where you just kind of subconsciously your hand just kind of finds the sound, if you will, and it's not so much a set pattern. And that's kind of what we're leaning towards here. But in order to be able to do that, I think this is where people mess up, is they don't push through, they don't, they, they, they start practicing stuff like this and they don't see the immediate use for it because sometimes it just, you know, takes a long time. Um, you, first, you've got to get the notes, you've got to get, the, you know, be able to hit the target, so to speak, before you can use it. And so then, once you, you can uh, take something like this and do hammer-on exercises, just moving up and down the fingerboard on the different notes. Um, one exercise that I'll, I'll show you later on is I practice in groups of three. So sometimes I'll do one, two, three, and then keep going. And then another three. And then the next three. Next three. And then you get something like. And you can create, you know, if, if somebody's like playing a G chord. And you can hit all these different sounds. What, what was that? Um, everybody makes mistakes, right? So the idea here is that it's giving you freedom up and down the fingerboard and you can kind of move in and out of this you don't it's not like something you have to you know play an entire solo like this okay so I could play something and I can jump in and out of that sort of thing uh, another thing too is having knowledge of this uh, will improve your shifting abilities like let's say you're down here and you want to get up here so move around fluently, you know, wherever I start. And I can move down. And vice versa, if I'm up here, I can start to move down there pretty quickly if I know my notes. And once again, as I stressed in my arpeggio video, the reason you want to learn this stuff is because you got to know where the strong notes are at. And We'll get into that on one string. But if you go back to the arpeggio video, you're going to see that your strong notes over the top of a G chord are G, B, and D. So with this same tactic, you could find it on this string. You have a third string would be the, the G, and then the fourth fret would be your B, and then your seventh fret's going to be your D. So those are your str strong notes here. That's why when I was improvising a minute ago, when I was playing over the G chord, I was kind of coming back to... There's my B note, and then there's my D. And those are the ones you can always kind of return to. But if you're just kind of noodling in the key of G, or if you have like a vamp, these things are great. I mean, I can... And sometimes I'll just sit around and just try to see what I find. Sometimes I write songs like this. Sometimes I just need uh, new ideas and I'm, I'm tired of like just doing my basic rolls and I might just kind of noodle around with my single string. We'll get into this more, but another thing you can do with this uh, bit of information is you can create patterns. Um, let's see if I can do this real quick. So remember how a minute ago I did like three notes? Three notes. Three notes again. You can do something different if you want to just kind of get your hands thinking uh, more is you can go up three and then down two. So I went one, two, three, down, and then again, one, two, three. And then you have a pattern. Now, the overwhelming part, sorry guys, I'm overwhelming you here, is that really you want to be able to do this on any string. So, start on your fourth string and do your G major. And basically be able to be able to run up through there. Not a C sharp, not actually a C natural. I think I was headed to the key of D there because uh, I started on a D. And that's one thing I was going to show you real quick I want you to be aware of is that this is a big mistake that people make with scales and even myself there I just kind of went into the D scale by accident I was thinking is that basically you want to be able to start your scale on any note. So you should be able to start it on a D. 
just because it's a G scale doesn't mean it's always going to start on a G. So I'll do this for you. It's going to be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and then even though you didn't start on a G, it's still a G scale. It still has those notes in there. And you should be able to start it on any string, any note at any point, right? So I'm gonna kind of just demonstrate what this will look like if you eventually get this. It's gonna take you a, a good bit of time. It took me a lot of time. So it's not gonna come easy. So here goes. That would be on that D string. And then we already did the third. Now, you're gonna start on B on the second string. You could start and go from B to B, and then on the D string. Understand that your D string here is the same as this D string, so they're literally the same frets, so don't create more work for yourself. If you get it on this string, guess what? It's the same on that string. So, what you can do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to kind of demonstrate how I could use this knowledge to just I don't know, move up and down the fingerboard so I'm not positionally playing like this in one place. Uh, let's start on the third string and just move around. Now I'm on the second string. Now I'm on the first string. video which was the scales. Remember I showed you this uh, now so there you saw me kind of go into that I started here and that's playing along one string too so you even saw it all, a little bit already but what I want to want to encourage you to be able to do is know your scale inside and out starting from any note on any string and be able to improvise set little sequences. there all I'm doing is I'm playing a note going back uh, two basically down one down again and then back up sequence and <coughs> this is going to allow you to have just complete freedom in the key of G so you're not you know, wondering where you're at at any point. And this is going to get you out of box playing and get you up and down the fingerboard. All right, if you have any questions, I know it's a lot to digest. You're certainly not going to learn all this in a week or maybe even a month or, I don't know, maybe even a year. I don't remember how long it took me. I just know it took me a while. But if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'm going to keep kind of randomly going with these topics as far as, you know, how to get you moving in and out of the uh, fingerboard a little bit more. But also, subscribe to my videos. It's going to keep them coming. If, if you have any requests, put them in the comments. I'll, I'll see if I can get to them, if it's stuff that I can help you with. Um, also go to my website and sign up for my email list, uh, www.jodyhughesmusic. I'm going to notify everybody when I have new videos, when I have new blogs, new products. I'm going to have a, uh, at some point, part of one of my goals this year is to have a scale studies or key studies um, book that's going to help everybody out. So I'll let you know when that comes out too. All right, take care.